Okay, so this is a very quick run through of how the iSpy works. It's not like a traditional router that you swap out in a premise. It's something you slot into the network. So I'm just going to explain that because some people have asked a few times about it. So here we have just a very simple drawing of, say, a typical home network or something like that. So you have the ISP modem on the site. This could be a 4G modem or any other type of modem connected to the internet. You have, say, your flat screen TV, laptops, all the usual stuff floating around in the home. Now, let's say you go and you install a camera system. So you have your three cameras connected to your NVR. Your NVR is connected to your ISP modem. Now, at this point, you'll be able to view anything on your NVR in terms of footage from your smartphone and your laptops because you're within the same network. Now, normally what you would do is if you wanted to get access to this from outside when you're out on the web, you would set up a port forward on a static IP on this modem and that would forward it in. Now, if you don't have a static IP on this modem, because some residential ones like Virgin Media don't, they give you dynamic, you would then have to set up dynamic DNS off this. Now, the, there's pros and cons to doing that. The advantage of setting up the, the, the dynamic DNS with the NVR is sometimes it's free through the, the, the provider, the camera systems. But basically, you have no control here. You set up your port forwards, but you have no control over who comes in and out. Anybody who, who scans the port can basically get access to the port. So they can basically brute force your password on your NVR and you can't stop them because you don't even know what's going on. If this modem for some reason fails and the ISP replaces it, you're gonna to have to go back out and replace it and set up the port forwards. So there's a few things here where you're very weak, very exposed. The other thing to bear in mind as well is that if someone does brute force the cameras and they get in, while they might necessarily be able to do anything uh, with the cameras, they can chew up all your bandwidth. So the people in here, when they're trying to watch their Netflix, are complaining to you going, the speed is really slow. The worst case scenario is they get malware onto the NVR and they infect all this stuff with ransomware. So the idea with the iSpy is not that you replace this modem. It is that you basically insert it in parallel to all the other equipment. So you basically just plug the iSpy into the existing modem. So we don't, this is one of the ways we achieve the savings on it. We don't have all the traffic and all this devices and all the stuff that this modem's doing. We're not trying to do it here. We don't have all that stuff going through it. The iSpy modem sits as if it was a flat screen, screen TV on your network. So what it basically does is the iSpy sits here and it wants to talk to the, the core, our core network. So it basically creates a tunnel out through the internet to our core network. And this is where your public IP address sits. It's not in here, it's not in here, it's basically in our core network. So there's a tunnel now created out to this uh, to our core network. Within our core network then you basically have, we set up a series of rules. We'll port forward four ports to this device. Those ports are locked down with a geo lock. You also have a port available for a VPN connection so that you can VPN into the device that isn't locked down in geo. From the portal in our device, from from the portal in our, our core network, you're able to program this device. You're not logging into the web GUI in this device. You can program it all from uh, your portal login, which is two-factor authentication and things like that. So it's nice and secure. And basically what you're doing is you're programming this device to talk to this NVR. So when a user basically connects, so the user's out here on the internet and he wants to connect remotely, let's say he wants to connect with the port forward or at the VPN, what basically happens is that he connects to the public IP in our core network. We know for that public IP and that this connection where to send it to, so we send it to the, the iSpy, basically down the tunnel into the iSpy. The iSpy has been programmed via the portal to talk to the NVR. So now this user is able to connect to this NVR. So if this is a smartphone and let's say it's, it's on an Irish network and you have bought advice for the Irish network, if he's on an Irish network, he would be able to connect to the port forwards because you've set up the rules like that. So you're basically locking it down to only Irish mobile phones or Irish IPs being able to connect, which reduces the amount of possible scans you can have against your, your device. If the person, say, decides to go to Spain or something like that, you could say to them, look, you need to use a VPN to connect. So they just run the OpenVPN software. It's freely available on iTunes and on Google Play Store. And that we, we basically have a connection file that you load and that connects you through with a cert based VPN and once you have a connection you have a VPN connection the whole way end to end so if you're if you're really paranoid about the protection of your data you really should only be using a VPN to connect and if you're only using a VPN to connect the traffic from the iSpy right through to the device is end to end encryption we're not decrypting it here and re-encrypting it whole way end to end 
So that means if you're, say, it's a, a school or a crash and you're worried about child safety issues, then you should definitely be encrypting it back to the, f the phone or the endpoint you're at. The Because the public IP sits here, some NVOR, especially at monitoring systems, need to have the emails to the monitoring systems or the alerts to the monitoring system come from the source public IP. So that's programmable through the portal. You basically just follow the, the wizard and it says, do you want to set up, say, SMTP alerts? And what you do on your NVOR is you set the NVOR, its SMTP server to be our device, and it then sends the email to our device. Our device has been programmed through the portal to take that email, allow it out, true RIP and send it off to the monitoring center. So even though our device isn't sitting here in the center of the network, you still have the traffic going to the monitoring company with the IP address that your inbound port forwards work. That sorts out the ability of monitoring companies to be able to connect in and receive uh, traffic from the same IP without interfering at all this. So all this traffic still goes out to your modem usually. There's no changes on speeds or anything like that because we're not doing and we're not changing it encapsulating or anything like that. So all, all these guys, if this is a gigabit broadband connection, it's not going to be shrinking anyway by changing it. You're not having to buy an expensive modem. By not having to buy a new expensive modem, you're saving costs. But so we're able to build it on a much smaller piece of hardware. So that's how the iSpy is different from our 3000 series. It's basically a subset of the features for that, tailored to sit just off your ISP modem on premises. So that can be a 4G or any other type of modem, and it connects to the NVR. So it gives you the connectivity you need for your camera system without you having to you know, rebuild the entire network just to access the camera systems. And it brings a layer of security to it that really is probably needed in the modern age. You can't be trusting to, uh, port four is left open on your ISP modem in this day and age. Thanks.